the great commission, you know, that great command that Jesus gave to all of us right before he went back up into heaven was to go into the world, right? And to baptize them, everybody, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. You might not need that coffee every single morning, that $7 coffee. You could save maybe just one day out of the week. Save that $7 to help somebody else instead. A great group of youth and young adults, they are in, as we speak, they are out and they are uh, a part of this ministry and mission. Whether it was writing cards and spreading a message of love through the written word, or to go around and show visually to a community that we are here, or to give a piece of food, uh, some water, or some love to, to the homeless. Uh, we each are members of our own community. We each carry with us part of the communities that we are part of. And if we can continue to spread the community of God's love, that's ultimately what he calls us to do. It's the theme of this year, loving the forgotten. And we just, we can't forget them, you know? These are people just like we are. So we all need to come together and um, not just do this today. It's, it's a lifestyle. This is just one day where we kick it off, make sure people understand how to do this type of stuff. We really need to do this every day to be to be the sermon to the people of the world. Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, Laquita. <laughs> Hi, Laquita. <laughs> Hello, everyone. That's great, that's better. Um, welcome. Thank you for showing up to our worship night. How long has it been since we had a worship night? A few months, so this is a treat. Um, we're gonna start off worship night with some songs, so it would be great if you could sing with us. All right, we're gonna start off with Days of Elijah.
other a little bit so I'm gonna need everyone who did the cards for the elderly to line up on this side of the church everyone's gonna get up 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 up, up. everyone who um who did the, the walk of encouragement in the middle and then everyone who did the homeless the food for the hymn homeless over there Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, and if you didn't do anything, then just join a line. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna have the leaders do like one, two, three. You're gonna break your team into three. And I guess the ones will sit right here in this front, here. The twos <laughs> will be over here. And then the threes will be more back, you know, just the back, but not so back, you know? Oh, yeah. Okay. Can you lead? Huh? Okay, I'll just split this group. <laughs> okay. You're one. One. Oh, one, two, three. Okay? Do the best. One, two, three. One, two, three. One. In the front. One. I was two. Where's where, do one? The, where do the twos one, go? Two. Here? The two can go oh, here. Oh, sorry, sorry. Wait, one is here? Yeah. Here or here? Just, Just like here. Here. Just right here. Just right here. Just right here. Okay, everyone who's a one, please raise your hand. Twos, raise your hand. Threes, raise your hand. Okay, so within your groups, you're gonna talk, each person is gonna go around and say their three most favorite things about themselves, okay? You got that? What are you saying? What are you going around and saying? The three most favorite things we love about ourselves. Okay, and each group is gonna see who can find the most common things around themselves. And whoever can find the most common things, is gonna be the winner. Okay. Yay. And you have to find a spokesperson to say. You have to say someone. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. How much time do we get? Oh gosh. Um, five minutes. Five minutes. You have five minutes right. to decide.
Ooh, it's working now. Okay, I hope you guys um, have your spokesperson to present. I didn't almost just fall. So since one is over here, they will start first. <laughs> okay, so um, to begin with, one thing we all have in common is shyness. We all shy, so I mean, I think I can't be shy. Okay, so that's one, and I think um, there are a lot of people here who also like singing. Singing is the other one, and food. Yes, we have people who like food in here, and okay, so there are scholars here to people who like research, like finding things out, and I think that we have one who is funny. I mean, some of us are funny, they say. Okay, um, okay, honesty. And I think, should I add forgetfulness for myself? <laughs> All right. Uh, I, okay. okay, it's working now. <laughs> All right, uh, so one thing, uh, the most commonality that our group had was weirdly enough hair. Everyone in our group really likes their hair apparently. Um, I don't share this with them, but everyone loves their hair. Uh, a lot of things else that everyone loved their own sense of humor. A little egotistical, but nice. Uh, so, uh, like half of our group, or like the majority, was uh, had athletic abilities. So they said that they liked their athleticism. One person said they were fit, and they liked that. Um, one weird one. <laughs> one weird one is uh, someone said they love uh, their taste in their socks. They like their socks. And, and it was a commonality, someone else agreed. One that I really liked is uh, Ms. Uh, Sister Latifa's food. That was a good one, Pastor. And uh, yeah. The commonalities we had, a lot of people mentioned that they like the fact that they are athletically gifted, they play a sport. Uh, music, another thing, being able to play a musical instrument, uh, going to North Shore. Several people in our group were North Shore alums. Uh, other ones were communication, um, helping others, and there's one other one, what was the other one? Oh, socializing, yes, socializing. Which one? Oh. Yeah, th those are our commonalities. Okay, well, it looks like group two won because they claimed that they had 20. I wasn't counting, so you can't fact track that, but. Jeremiah claims that we have 55. I, I think that should be that validated, not, right? That's clearly that's what problem. we had. It says it on the screen, too. So we will now move on to our next portion, which is discussion. Thank you, Parker. Thank you, yes. And you can stay in your groups because you will need these groups in discussion. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jasmine. All right. Listen, like she said, let's stay in our groups. Let's not move away yet because in this discussion, we need to get to know not only each other a little bit better, but also get to know how was the experience for everybody. You see, all of you, I believe, were at GYD, correct? Who here was not at GYD? You were there. You were right next to me. <laughs> I, we want to know. We want to know how your experience was. Was this a first time for, for, for somebody? Who was a first timer here? All right, some first timers. Who has done this like twice? Twice before. All right, twice. Two people. All right, who's done it more than twice? This is the third time, exactly. So some of us can raise our hands, exactly. We want to hear, we want to hear from you what you uh, have experienced. How was it for you? So get in your groups right now with your new friends that you're meeting and getting to know, that you have these commonalities. Let's talk for a few minutes, all right? We're going to have, I think, uh, maybe some soft background music to go with it, uh, team up there, and then we're going to come back and we're going to proceed with the program. So come together, join together. And let's talk a little bit about how it all went down.
one more minute. Thirty seconds. Let's come back together. Let's come back together. Thank you all so much. Did you enjoy your discussion? Did you enjoy your conversation? I think that you learned a lot about what other people experienced, right? You see, I want to be able to invite, I want to ask three people, three individuals, to come up here and join me and share the experience that you had today. Just what you felt, what you experienced, what was in your heart, what was going on in your mind. Did something happen at the place that you went that was interesting? We want to hear about it. So now Lini's got microphones here. Actually, I'll do this. You don't have to come up here. You can be where you are. We got mics that can go over to you and we can share, we can share uh, the mics with you. So you can, you can tell us from where you are. So anybody would like to raise their hand and like to share a little bit about how their day was. You get to talk you? into a mic, isn't is that, that you? so cool? Is this you, my friend, you wanna start out? Yeah, all right, talk to us. How was your day? How did you experience it? What did you feel? What did you do also? So, we did the encouragement walk and basically it felt nice when people honked when we were showing our posters. Wonderful. Thanks, my friend. Thanks, Daniel. Go ahead, my man. Can I come up to the stage? Yeah. yeah. You have a mic. Talk here. Come up here, man. Right now. Okay, okay, okay. So I want to come up And while you're at it, do a sermon. Go ahead, go ahead. Come right here. Oh, you want to come up here or you want to stay down here? You want to come up here? All right, listen. Come up here with me. All right, my man. Tell us, tell us your name again. My name is Jordan. All right, Jordan. Jordan, what did you do today? How did you like it? Um, we... I loved the first part when I firstly came in. We were singing the songs. It was really fun. Um, I really didn't know that we were coming here today because it was my, it's my big brother's birthday today. Wow. Oh, happy birthday to him. And... My mom told us that we're coming here, and I was just surprised. Mm. Okay, okay. But were you surprised in a good way, though? Yes. Hey, that's it. That's what we like to hear. Listen, we love those surprises. So you did the encouragement walk? Is that what you did? Yeah. All right, so how was the experience for you? Did you like it when they were making noise, when they were honking, they were passing by? Like, how did you feel? I really loved when they were honking, like... One guy, he just pushed on his steering wheel. It was so loud. I was so close to his car. Yeah, he kept honking for like a whole block. I remember that. Dude, that's a lot of fun. Well, thanks for sharing with us, man. Appreciate it. Let's give it up for Jordan. All right, Jordan, thanks for sharing. All right, there we go for, for now, Lini. Anybody else? Anybody else would like to share how their experience was? 
All right, we got somebody from this side, we got somebody from the back, but we got nobody from this group. My own group. Oh, there it is, Sister Laquita. Sister Laquita, talk to us. What did you, how, how, what, how active were you today and how did you like what you did? Well, I was with the group that were passing out cards and roses to people. Just, um, you never know, you're always somewhere when someone, you never know when they need you, so. <laughs> we, a, a, a gentleman approached us and he didn't have um, a charger for his phone. His phone had died. And um, he just wanted to get back to work. <laughs> so, what I took away from that, always be willing to help someone. That's about it. There it is, <laughs> wonderful. Give it up for Sister Laquita. Yes. Wonderful, thanks everybody for sharing. Uh, I'm gonna give one more shot to somebody else that hasn't shared and would like to share. I know we said three, but you know what? I'm feeling good, I'm gonna do four, if I may. Anybody else would like to share how their day was, their activity, what they did, how they felt? Hmm? Going, going once, going twice. What are we thinking about? Jasmine, all right, Jasmine, talk to us. Okay, so, well, I did the cards too, and I was talking about how, um, well, we, we did, one group did the homeless, feeding the homeless, and we obviously know that they need help, but on a sh when you're walking, um, when you're walking past a stranger, you don't know if they need help. Well, obviously everyone needs help because the world is pretty, messed up, everyone has their struggles, but you don't know how much help and you don't know how the card or the rose could have lifted up their day. So it's just nice how we didn't really know what they were going through, but we still could do something to make their day brighter. Absolutely, all right, give it up for Jasmine. Jasmine. Listen, guys, this is something that happens once every year, this thing called Global Youth Day. It's not just something that we do here at North Troy, you see, it's something that all young people from our church get to do worldwide. So as you were doing what you were doing, there were people in South Africa doing the same. There were people in Asia doing the same. There were people on the islands doing the same. You see, everybody's coming together to make a big positive impact in the world for Jesus. And didn't you like being a part of it? Woo! I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. I can't wait for the next one, but listen, don't let this be your only shot at being a light in the world for Jesus. Don't stop. Let this be the start. Don't wait till next year. Keep it going. There's plenty of 2022 left. Right, guys? And right now, I want to transition us to a moment of offering. Uh, we're going to collect a, a little offering that assists us with our uh, ministry, with our youth and young adult ministry, with our worship night events, with our game nights. And we would love uh, to... Um, Thank you for your participation, and you can show uh, your commitment and your support through that as well. But before we do, we just want to bow our heads and pray for the offering that we are going to collect. Let's close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father God, thank you so much for your love and your amazing grace and how you've been bringing us through this awesome GYD 2022, Lord. What a blessing to be able to walk outside and encourage people to write, uh, you know, caring words for other individuals, to be able to feed uh, your children, Lord. Um, Father God, we're humbled that you even call us to be a part of this ministry. And right now, Lord, as this offering comes around, Lord, we just want to be able to continue to dedicate uh, ourselves to you, dedicate this ministry to you, dedicate the young people of the North Shore community to you, Lord, because we know that you're doing awesome things here in this place and that you will continue to do it uh, throughout 2022 and beyond till Jesus comes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
our offering. Uh, if you can, please donate so we can continue to hold these events in the future. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. You may sing along if you'd like, side by side. Listen, I don't know if I will call this much of a devotional, but I will call it a challenge. I think that we all need to be challenged today. You see, I, I don't think that we can go out of here after doing everything that we did and not allow for God's Holy Spirit to challenge us, for God's Spirit to shake us up. Because don't get me wrong, listen, when, when, when we're on cruise control, when we've been doing the same thing for days and weeks and months and years, it becomes monotonous, right? Sometimes it becomes just like second nature. We don't even think about it. How often does that happen to us when it comes to the things of God, you guys? Sometimes we just think that, man, yo, the things of God is just me showing up at church. Bro, I showed up at church. I'm Gucci. I'm Audi. And that's it. You know, oh, man, I read my, you know, two minutes of Bible today. I'm Gucci. I'm Audi. Boom. There's nothing that the Lord can say to me, man. I did it. Oh, man, I gave my offering, man. When they, when they pulled out a plate in front of me earlier today, man, I threw some money in there, bro. I did my duty. I did my job. I'm Audi. You see, guys, it's not about that. You see, the great commission, you know, that great command that Jesus gave to all of us right before he went back up into heaven was to go into the world, right, and to baptize them, everybody, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. You see, there was a story that took place right before Jesus even said those words. It's found in the book of John, 
chapter 4. Some of you guys might have your Bibles with you, maybe on your phone. So if you do, join, join me real quick because we're going to jump in there. John chapter 4, verses 13 to 15. Let's pray real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, God, please be with a short word. May it inspire us, may it shake us, and may your Holy Spirit drive us closer and closer to your Son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the Word of God says, check this out. It says that Jesus said to her, who is her? Stop with me for a second. If you go a little earlier in the chapter, chapter you're able to see, you'll be able to find that Jesus, he's not back in his home country. You see, he's in a distant land. He went into a territory of a place called Samaria. You see, back in Jesus' time, they kind of disliked these people that lived in this place called Samaria. It's a whole backstory. Don't get me wrong. Like, you got to go back to the Old Testament and you got to find out where the struggle, where the fight, where the argument began. It's way old. But don't get me wrong, man. When you don't resolve those things and they just keep building up, eventually centuries down the line, issues get bigger, right? And by the time of Jesus, you guys, the issue was so big that, that Jews, or basically like the people that Jesus was born into, they were like, yo, man, we hate these people so much that although it might be a shortcut for us to cut into their land, to go northbound, to, you know, check out some other cities up there. Listen, man, we're going to, we choose to travel three extra days. We would rather travel three extra days instead of doing a shortcut just because we hate these people. Don't get me wrong, man. It was much shorter to travel northbound through the region of Samaria. Less mountains, easier to travel, but not. The Jewish guys, they were so invent of like, yo, we cannot be around these people. Get us out. We, we can even go around it. But right here, Jesus is in the land of these people that the Jewish people hated so much. And you see, Jesus, he meets up with a woman. He has an appointment with a woman at a well. You see, it's the middle of the day. It's hot. It is scolding heat. She's going to get water at the well. You see, when we study the customs of her people's tradition, man, that's not what they did around new time. Around lunchtime, they were like chilling because the heat was too high. Like, kind of kind of like how gas is right now. It's too high. But over there, it was the heat. So like, they were like, I'm not going to go to the well and get water at noon. It's going to be burning. I'm going to wait, you know, either till sunset or I'm going to go next morning. But you see, she's going to get water at noon. And that's already an indication for us that, man, she doesn't want to come in contact with nobody. Nobody is to be at the well at noon. She's going by herself because she wants some alone time. She doesn't want to meet up. She doesn't want to talk to nobody. She doesn't want nobody looking at her, talking about her, gossiping. She doesn't want any of that. So she's there. She's thinking that she's going to be by herself, and she sees this man, Jesus, sitting on the well, and Jesus starts a conversation with her. And the conversation essentially leads to Jesus revealing who he is. You see, at this point in the book of John, you see, Jesus hasn't shown up to his own people yet, like, yo, I am the dude. I am the man. He didn't. First, he chose to go to the land of these hated people, I would even say these forgotten people, and he chose to reveal himself to a woman of that land, a woman that was ashamed of her life, a woman that was uh, trying to avoid contact with other people. And this is what he says to her, verse 13. He said to her, everybody who drinks of the water of this well, lady, everybody's going to be thirsty. Everybody's going to be thirsty again. They're, they're, they're going to be thirsty, and it's going to keep repeating itself. But whoever drinks of the water that I give to them, they will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give to them will become in them like a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Now look at what the woman says. The woman turns to Jesus, and she says, Sir... <laughs> 
give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. You see, the continuation of the conversation is a little bit long, but in a nutshell, I'll tell you what happens. This woman is so amazed that Jesus knows so much about her without her even opening her mouth that she goes back to her land, to her people, to her village, to her hood, per se. And she tells everybody, she tells everybody, hey, everybody come through and see a man that told me everything about myself that I don't tell nobody. You see, the, the people that she was trying so hard to avoid, you see, the conversation that she had with Jesus was so impactful that the people that she was trying to avoid are the people that she ran back to to tell about Jesus. Look at the chain reaction. Do you see what just happened? She's avoiding people. She meets Jesus. Jesus changes her life in such an amazing way that she's like, man, I can't help it. I don't care who it is that's the first one inside. I'm going to tell them about this guy. And what did we do out there today? Some of you guys were holding signs, and I was there with you guys by the street. It was raining. It was cold. Some of you guys were shivering. Some of us were jumping, not only because we were excited, but because we wanted to keep warm. <laughs> that's, that's the honest truth. We're like, no, oh, our legs are too cold. <laughs> Some of you guys were out there handing out sandwiches to the homeless. You see, we see a lot of homeless people sometimes when we're going around the city right? Some of our friends went out there to feed the homeless today. Some of our other friends said that they wanted to encourage the elderly, elderly that are oftentimes away from their loved ones for so long. They don't get to connect with them. They feel sometimes limited. They don't have all of the, the, the resources oftentimes. Sometimes they feel like they are the forgotten ones. <laughs> Any of you guys know what the theme of our GYD for this year is? The theme is loving the forgotten, loving the forgotten. You see, guys, the minute in our lives when we are willing to do as Jesus did, to leave our, you know, context, our place where we're like, man, we know the custom, we know the tradition here, we know everything out here. The minute we're willing to abandon that safe space and go into a new space, sit down by a quote-unquote well with a person that doesn't know the truth of Jesus. And the minute we're open and willing to open our hearts to them about Jesus, I believe that the people out there can have a Samaritan woman experience. I believe it. And don't think that you need to be an exquisite orator or preacher or speaker like don't think that you need to go study theology at a seminary somewhere don't think about any of that be willing simply to sit with somebody and talk to them about the light that is in your heart as long as you open your mouth and you're willing to share about Jesus that starts a chain reaction the story tells us that by the end of the story, her entire village, I'm not talking about two, three, four, five people. I'm talking about a village, y'all. A whole village. Think about like a whole neighborhood here in Chicago. Think about Lincoln Square. Can you imagine that? If the story took place here in Chicago, maybe all of Lincoln Square would come to believe in Jesus. How many people is that? A lot of people. Because Jesus was willing to leave his traditional context, go into a new place, do what he did, and in that process teach his disciples a, a true value, a true lesson of what it means to be a follower of the Most High God. To present the kingdom of God to people that are lost. That's our calling. That's what we're called to do. Disciples of Jesus today. Do we want to start a chain reaction? Do we want to sit down by a quote-unquote well? If that well is the gaming arcade, if that well is the public library, if that well is the public supermarket, the hospital, the bowling alley, 
online, on social media, whatever that well might be, I pray that the Spirit of God inspires you to go there and sit with regular people and just talk to them about this water that never runs out and watch the chain go into effect. Do you want that? I know that I definitely, definitely do. Don't let GYD be a once a year thing. Make GYD a part of your life. Live GYD every single day. Loving the forgotten because Jesus did so too. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for my friends. Thank you so much for inspiring us today, all day, about what it means to love those that are often forgotten. We were sharing love and care to those in nursing homes that are often feel neglected and forgotten. We were out there trying to feed homeless people that often feel like society have forgotten them. Today, we were trying to encourage people along the roadside. Some might be feeling secretly in their heart of hearts that they are alone in this world and that there's nobody out there that either cares for them or could ever present to them a better alternative. Father God, that's what we did today. And we just want to ask you that you inspire us to live GYD not just once a year, but every day. Help us to be willing, help us to be open to sit at the wells that we need to sit at. Whether it be online, whether it be on Snapchat, whether it be on TikTok, whether it be in, the, in school, whether it be at work, whether it be in the local, local neighborhood place, wherever it might be. Help us to be willing to share the truth that only you can give, the truth of this well that can be built inside of us that will never run dry. This truth, this powerful salvation that only Jesus can give to those that know him, love him, and accept him. Use us today and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you everyone for coming out to worship night. We're going to end off worship night with our closing song, What a Beautiful Name, if you all want to stand with us and sing this song together as we close off this night.
thank you everyone for joining us for Global Youth Day. It's been quite an experience with you all. Uh, the one takeaway that I most want to impress about to everyone here is the sense of community. It's been wonderful to spend community with you all today. We have a wonderful community here at the church. Uh, but what we did today was to bring part of our community to others, whether it was writing cards and spreading a message of love through the written word, or to go around and show visually to a community that we are here, or to give a piece of food, uh, some water, or some love to, to the homeless. Uh, we each are members of our own community. We each carry with us part of the communities that we are part of. And if we can continue to spread the community of God's love, uh, that's, that's ultimately what he calls us to do. And so I hope that as we leave this place, as we leave this place of worship, and as we leave this day in which we spent being community to others, uh, that we will also reflect on who we are within God's community and how we can continue to spread that to the forgotten around us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what you have done in our lives. We thank you for the privilege that we have to be here, to be ambassadors for you, to spread your love to the forgotten. Help us not to forget who you are and help us not to forget those you have called your children, the people that we cross on the street every day, the people uh, driving by us, the people who need our help, who need our prayers, who need our thoughts. We pray that you will continue to influence them through us. Help us to fulfill your calling. Help us to realize that these truly are uh, the days in which we need to be laborers in your vineyard. There are so many people out there who need to hear your word, who need to uh, have the helping hand of you through our actions. Help us to be that person for them. In your son's name I pray all these things. Amen. All right, thank you guys. You guys can have a seat. We're going to close right now. Just one last announcement. Tomorrow is the start of our Youth Week of Prayer, and we're very excited for it. We sent out the link in our church newsletter and our ch church mass text. But if you still have not gotten the link, it's on Zoom, by the way. Tomorrow at 7 p.m., we're going to kick it off. If you need the link, reach out to me. Reach out to any of the leaders here. They'll have the link as well uh, on Zoom. All right, you can just click on it. 7 p.m., we'll be right there uh, worshiping, uh, having fun, but also having a powerful message about self-worth, self-esteem, and how much we are worth to God. All right, so guys, have fun tonight at the game night. We'll see you guys downstairs shortly. <laughs>